Welcome to Language in Film, where we take a closer look at how language is creatively used in cinema. Being both a sci-fi and language nerd, boy did I sure love the 2016 film Arrival. So it was only a matter of time before I tackled the decipherment of the alien language portrayed in the film, which is called Heptapod B. Is Heptapod B an actual language? Just how complex and alien is it? Can you learn to read it? And more importantly, does it let you see the future? If it did, well, then you should already know the answer, shouldn't you? I guess we're done. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe. Okay, but seriously, I did spend some time analyzing the symbols, which are called logograms in the film, and I'll use the term logo for short because I'm gonna say it a lot. I want to share what I discovered with you, but I've got to warn you, what I found out will irrevocably change your experience of this movie. So if you want to keep that sense of wonder and mystery that the film does such a masterful job of conveying, you may want to skip this video. On the other hand, if you are interested in seeing the mechanics of how an alien language is composed for a movie like Arrival, then strap yourselves in for a linguistic breakdown that's out of this world. Logogram literally means word sign and usually indicates that each written symbol represents a single word or concept. Chinese orthography is a prominent example of this. Many ancient writing systems like Mayan, Sumerian, Egyptian, and so on were logographic in nature. When human beings first began recording their speech with symbols, it was at the word level. The invention of alphabetic writing came along only later, so logographies have deep roots within the human story of language. But because these writing systems have been largely supplanted by alphabets and other orthographies, it makes for a good choice if you're going to design an alien-looking language for Western audiences. And before I start nitpicking linguistic flaws with Heptapod B, I just want to clarify that Arrival is one of my favorite films of the last decade, and I highly recommend it. We don't get enough smart sci-fi movies anymore, particularly ones that are so thoroughly invested with concepts related to language. And for what it was designed for, this script overall was a resounding success. The true genius of Heptapod B lies in its visual design. The circular form of the logos convey this idea of a non-linear orthography, which is mentioned in the film. The idea here is that sentences from the aliens appear fully formed, since the heptapods don't experience the arrow of time like we do. When you get right down to it, writing something in a circle doesn't necessarily make it non-linear. But it's probably about as close as we're going to get, visually, in a movie for general audiences. The other ingenious design aspect lies in the Rorschach-style symbols, which bring to mind the bizarre and otherworldly work of artists like Ralph Steadman. We wind up projecting our own interpretations of complexity onto these splotches and splatters that indicate an inky mystery and depth. Combining these random patterns with the perfect geometry of the circle results in a really nice balance between randomness and formality, chance and design. And lastly, both circle and splatter are a visual representation of the physical laws of the universe. To create then the language, I had a couple of people, uh, graphic designers, linguists, try to, to come up with the language that we would use, you know. I was not really satisfied with, uh, with anything because it always, it always related to something that we know. Arrival's production designer, whose wife, Martine Bertrand, came up with the design for Heptapod B, said that they created a vocabulary of over a hundred different logos, though not all of them made it into the film. It's important to understand that this script was designed by an artist, not a linguist. This has some startling implications once you start actually analyzing the logos and their meaning. Heptapod B, I found out, appears to be more about appearance than substance. The linguistic complexity and alienness this script is supposed to carry just isn't there under close scrutiny. But I don't want to sound too negative in my assessment, because linguists and scientists were consulted when this film was made, and there is clearly an effort to try and make Heptapod B consistent in its use of symbols. That consistency just breaks down, though, with linguistic analysis. So I used two sources for the logograms analyzed in this video. The first is, of course, the movie itself. There's a sequence where 14 logos are shown on screen with their associated meaning. 
The second source is the largest repository of Heptapod B symbols I could find online, which I will link in the description. This consists of 38 symbols that were sent to scientific consultants Stephen and Christopher Wolfram, who helped design the software we see in the movie that analyzes the logos. Let's call them the Wolfram set. What's really fascinating is that this analysis software is really a lot more complex than the script itself. The fact that the software analyzing the script looks and is very complicated implies that the script itself must be the same. So for this video analysis, I studied the 38 found online from the Wolfram set, plus the 14 I mentioned earlier that appear in the film. So that's at least 52 logos, plus any others that were prominently featured in the film. Here's a quick shot of the Wolfram set along with their file names. Unfortunately, you can't assume the file name of the logogram equals the meaning of the logogram. Sometimes you can. Some are very clearly named after their meaning and they mean only one word. But often the file name doesn't tell you what the logo means, but rather where it occurs in the movie. For example, it looks like co-written logogram from the Wolfram set was used in the movie to mean child. Another example. The Wolfram logo, which is clearly labeled as time, winds up being used as the symbol for right in the film. And the film has a completely different logo for time. So there are some differences between the Wolfram set and the final movie, which makes things harder to analyze. While some logos have only one meaning, many others are clearly combinations of two or more words. For example, we have a logo for Abbott and then a logo for death. I will use the term morpheme to refer to an ink blot, which means a word. So this is the morpheme for Abbott. This is the morpheme for death. We have separate logos for both of these morphemes by themselves, but you can combine both morphemes into one logo and you have Abbott is dead. That's used in this scene of the film. This is how Heptapod B works, theoretically. If you want to make a sentence, you take the morphemes you want and string them together around the circle. And that's as complicated as it gets. It doesn't appear to matter where you put the morpheme. It can go anywhere. The varying weight of the circle, whether it's wavy or straight, complete or broken, I found to have no connection with meaning, at least from my limited sources. It seemed more of an aesthetic choice which seems to contribute to the visual complexity of the script. So it's like flourishes on calligraphy. So each morpheme or ink blot has an associated concept as demonstrated by the setup of the tablet Louise uses to communicate with the aliens. This means that if you see one of these ink blots or morphemes contained in a logo, then the logo should represent the chunk of meaning somehow, which is associated with that morpheme. It's important to recognize that these ink blots aren't like letters of the alphabet, which don't have to have any meaning by themselves until you combine them together. Now onto the analysis. Of the logos I analyzed, the most common morpheme, unsurprisingly, is Louise, the name of the main character. It appears in 11 of the Wolf from 38. The next most common symbol is Weapon, which appears in 8 of the Wolf from 38. And one of the Wolfram set is just a combo of these two words, plus a mouse-shaped morpheme, which crops up several times in several different logos. The file name of this logo is Louise Has Weapon. So we could tentatively assign the meaning has to this symbol, though you'll see why that becomes problematic later on. Now, a key plot point of the movie is that this symbol is initially misinterpreted as weapon, when in fact it actually means tool or gift, and refers to the language Heptapod B itself. So that actually brings up a really important point, which is that words can have multiple meanings. This can result in a lot of ambiguity if we try to interpret these logos, which are only assigned a single English word most of the time. For example, this messy logo apparently just means system. It's both a logo and a single morpheme. But the English word system can have all kinds of meanings. Solar system, gaming system, nervous system, 
systemic violence, a systematic investigation, it's hard to figure out what kind of system we're talking about here. And how did Louise learn that this logo means system in the first place? What kind of system did she use to demonstrate the meaning of our word system when she was trying to teach the word to the heptapods so that they could in turn teach us their word for it? This is where the consistency of heptapod B begins to break down. For example, in the movie, we glimpse the logos for system, star, planet, and solar system. Now, wouldn't it be cool if the logo for solar system was made up of the morpheme for star or planet and system combined? Just like Abbott is dead is composed of the morphemes for Abbott and death. But instead, we just have these four unrelated logos. So sometimes the creators went out of their way to combine morphemes to create entirely new logos, and sometimes they didn't. And they definitely deserve credit for their attempts at consistency. But the more I looked at Heptapod B, the more cracks just kept showing. And it became increasingly evident that no one with much knowledge of linguistics appears to have had a hand in creating Heptapod B, because the script lacks almost any sort of grammar. It's just English words disguised as ink blots strung together on a circle in seemingly random patterns. The problem is that you often need grammar to clarify your meaning. So let's take this logo, which contains the morphemes for Louise, Ian, and the verb leave. Does this logo mean Ian leaves Louise or Louise leaves Ian? Well, actually it means Ian and Louise must go, but we only know that from the file name, not from any information contained in the logo itself. I found only two exceptions where I did see some grammatical constructions. First, there is a morpheme to make any logo into a question. And what a coincidence, it looks like a question mark. So if you want to turn this logo offer weapon into offer weapon, then you just add this little hook and boom, you've got a question. It makes sense, but I wouldn't say that it's like super alien or unlike anything to be seen in human language. I didn't want something that can relate to any human language. And that's the only morpheme I could tell serves a grammatical function. There's one other possible example of grammatical function which I actually thought was pretty cool. This logo from the Wolfram set is named It Wasn't Us. What we have here is the symbol for Ian and the symbol for Louise overlapping one another to create the meaning us. Now that's cool, and that's the kind of thing I wanted to see all over the place but this was the only logo I could find that seemed to do that type of thing. From my analysis, what it looks like happened is that a lot of morphemes are shared among different logos which aren't related in terms of meaning. This creates a visual consistency, but not a semantic one. That's a polite way of saying, it looks like the symbols were just recycled among logos without much regard for what they meant. I found a ton of this, and I won't bore you to death with every instance, but I'll just show you some glaring examples. So we can take this symbol from it wasn't us, which I guess must mean wasn't or not, and we can find it in the symbol for star. I'm not clear how or why the logo for star should contain a symbol that means something like wasn't or not. And then right next to it in the symbol for star is the morpheme for Abbott, just turned upside down. Another example, the logo for mother contains the morpheme for heptapod, but the logos for woman, man, and child do not contain the morpheme for heptapod. The symbol for child contains the verb to solve, and it goes on and on like this. Louise's tablet, by the way, is another method I tried to use to interpret these logos, but I just encountered more inconsistencies. For one thing, it's odd that aliens who have a, quote, nonlinear orthography slash conception of time would even have words for now and tomorrow. I mean, how was Louise even able to demonstrate the concepts of now and tomorrow in order to teach them to the aliens so we could get their corresponding morpheme? Just imagine trying to explain the concept of now to a creature with no concept of linear time without referencing the past or the future. It's not like explaining the concept of Ian walks or Apple. 
Also, the morphemes on her tablet tend to match up with the logos we find elsewhere, but not always. Notice how solve is the same between her tablet and the Wolfram logo for solve, but heptapod and earth look completely different. All of this starts to make heptapod B often appear not so much nonlinear as nonsensical. Like I said earlier, though, I don't think we should dwell on this too much because overall the visual design more than compensates for these issues. There's no way you'd notice any of these issues just watching the movie. And the filmmakers do an excellent job of using various methods to make the script appear enigmatic and alien. Especially considering I've been a fanboy of Denis Villeneuve since Enemy blew my mind back in 2013. Villeneuve gets a pass in my book for his continued work in creating thoughtful, gorgeous, exciting, fascinating worlds. His contribution to the science fiction genre in this day and age is nothing short of miraculous. I can't wait to see what his next project is going to be. I would just think twice before getting that next Heptapod B tattoo because you can't be 100% sure of what it actually means.